You know, guys, we're a purple state. We are. We have, we have voted for Democrats. And traditionally, North Carolina has been a beacon in the South. But to draw districts where the politicians choose their voters instead of the voters choosing the politicians, mm -hmm. then that's just wrong. And what you have in a purple state is you have 10 Republican members of Congress and three Democrats. You have about a third of the state legislature who are Democratic versus the rest being Republican. And that is wrong. And that is why you get the attacks on public education. That's why 20,000 teachers can march on Raleigh. <laughs> teachers, by the way, teachers, by the way, who are mo more interested in outcomes than they are incomes. They care about their kids. But this legislature continues to give money to private school vouchers that are unaccountable. They continue to make sure that we're ranked 37th in the country in teacher pay and 39th in per pupil expenditure, and that is unacceptable. They've refused, they've refused to close the insurance gap, could expand Medicaid and insure 650,000 North Carolinians. They could create 40,000 good paying jobs. They can help control health care costs for small businesses. They're hurting women's health and reproductive health. They, they, are, they are making cuts that hurt our efforts for clean water and clean air. And time and again, they take steps to move North Carolina backward. Guys, we got to change this thing this November. This November, we can change it. Absolutely. We've started an organization called Break the Majority. Oh. In North Carolina, every House seat and every Senate seat are two-year terms. That means everybody is up for election this November. And I need your help out there, and I need, I need people's help all across North Carolina. We, for the first time in history, we have recruited a Democratic candidate for every single seat in the legislature. Seventy-seven, seventy-seven of them are strong women. And, And they're leaders in their community, and they're great candidates. And let me tell you about calling them late at night, tell, asking them, please run for the state legislature. They say, they say isn't this a job that pays about $13,000 a year? <laughs> and I say, yes. Because state is it, legislators, it, want a, legislators want a coin, too, Governor. I know, I know, I know. But, well. but, but you've got to go with your heart here. They, they, they say... They say, and, and plus, i got to raise about a half a million dollars or more, and I'll say, yes. <laughs> and they'll say, and plus, everything about my life is going to be research, and I'll probably see the worst things I've ever done on a TV ad. And I said, yes. It's a good case and, so far. And, <laughs> Very convincing. And, and, but then I say, but you have a chance to change history with me in North Carolina and so many of them said, where do we sign up? So, so, Governor, to that end, shout out to the 77 women on the ballot, okay? What we have now is an opportunity this November to put a legislature in place that's going to work with me. We ought to be making it easier for people to vote mm. rather than harder for people to vote. But, but they're still messing with it. They're going to put a constitutional amendment on the ballot for voter ID, they cut early voting. They're continuing to do those things to make it harder for people to vote, and we know who they're going after. Who are they going after? Tell us. Well, the, the, court, the court told us they were going after African Americans with surgical precision. This is how pointed they were in, in what they were doing. So it's pretty clear what was happening, and they're continuing to try to do it again. Mm -hmm. This is why we have to break the majority in November. And even with these bad gerrymandered districts, it looks good out there right now.
We can't rely on this blue wave that I believe is coming. We do not know how big it will be. Our job is to maximize whatever wave there is, that we make sure that every single district is challenged and that we can get as many seats as we possibly can to make North Carolina the state that we know it is because it is not the state that the legislature says it is. We have to pay attention to state races. Republicans have done it for decades. This is why in 2010, when they won and they got control of redistricting, they were able to redraw congressional maps so that that's why we have the kind of Congress that we have in place now. And we have to have a positive message. You know, my CEO mission statement for North Carolina is simply this. I want a North Carolina where people are better educated, where they're healthier, where they have more money in their pockets, and they have the opportunities to live a more abundant and purposeful life. That is my CEO mission statement. We have to, ha we have to be consistent. We have, one of the things I did when I ran for governor, I had the same message everywhere I went with every group I spoke to, and what we have to do is make sure that Democrats across North Carolina are giving that message now. Thank you.